Um, before I start, a little bit of the logistics. Um, this webinar is being recorded. Um, we have enabled the Q&A, so you can, um, on top of your screen, at the bar on top, click on Q&A or whatever acronym is used in your local language and ask your questions. You can ask your questions throughout the entire uh, presentation and we will later, at the end of the presentation, um, answer them together with my colleagues. Um, the way, and that's all on logistics, the way uh, we have structured this webinar is, OK, we're going to speak about the tax, the plastic tax in Spain. We're going to explain the technical um, rules and how it works, taxable wage rate, etc. Then we're going to speak about the administrative obligations, so compliance. And then we're going to go into, OK, how do we normally approach it? But more importantly, the questions. Uh, what usual questions do you have? Um, and from our experience, because we've done a few webinars on plastic tax already, is the questions that are more important and that are, you know, raise more interest. So my plan is to dedicate 25 minutes to the uh, actual presentation and then leave in 15 minutes for questions. Um, the questions will be answered by my colleague Juan Fernandez and Miguel Diegues, who are experts on the tax. They have been working um, on the Spanish plastic tax since the summer already. And even they have been uh, located in some companies as in-house team, you know, trying to find the data and trying to ensure that uh, the company is compliant. Two words about Marosa before we start. So Marosa is a European VAT compliance firm. That means we help businesses going abroad by getting VAT numbers and filing VAT returns. Uh, and we do it with technology. So we do it in large volumes. We're a team of 60 people now. We're filing over 40,000 returns um, in Europe. Um, our team is a mix of software developers and tax advisors. We have, for the last few years, um, providing our solution with our software. Um, so that was like a tech enabled service. But starting this year, only recently, we started licensing our software. So because of a big demand from shared service centers, in-house teams, even tax firms, um, we started offering the software as a license, yeah, as a SaaS solution. So after this webinar, um, and I am uh, aware that many of you are part of shared service centers, I'll be more than keen on doing a demo on Batify. Uh, which is a software that automates the entire process of producing and managing VAT returns, automates the generation of VAT returns, has data analytics embedded. Um, it also automates the actual submission of VAT return and all the management and, and metrics and visibility that goes around the VAT compliance function of a business. And that's all about Maros. Those were my five minutes of presentations taking Two minutes for waiting, so I hope that's acceptable. And let's now go into the actual topic that we're here for, which is the Spanish plastic tax. Let me just start with the first uh, and important remark. Why so late? Why is it 19th of January? And we're here presenting a tax that has been in place since the 1st of January. Well, simply because the regulation was late. Um, we only knew about the details of the tax on the 30th of December. And we only knew about the impact of other administrative obligations, particularly TPR, on the 28th of December. So interpreting those and checking those with the tax authorities um, has explained the delay on doing this webinar. So that's, that's the explanation. You know, we, we're doing it late because the regulation was published late. Having said that, let's go and explain the tax. Uh, first of all, the Spanish plastic tax applies to three main activities, which are manufacturing, imports, and intra-community acquisitions of non-reusable 
recycled plastic packaging. So that, which is only a few words, can could already take us quite some time to evaluate, but just going through quickly. Manufacturing refers is typically a local activity, and it refers to the actual production of non-reusable plastic uh, packaging. Imports um, refer to plastic packaging falling within the tax that are that comes into Spain from non-EU countries. When I say Spain, uh, I mean Spain and Canary Islands. Yeah. For the purposes of this tax, um, the Canary Islands is not separate. There is no EGIC like it is in, in, um, in the Canary Islands instead of VAT. There is one plastic tax in Spain. This is important because um, goods coming from a mainland in Spain into the Canary Islands is not considered an import. It's just a local movement. There's one specific uh, um, or particular issue here, which is goods coming from France into mainland Spain, like it's an intercommunity acquisition, but from France into Canary Islands, it's an import. So that's an inconsistency which is explained by the process of recording the arrivals in, in the Canary Islands, but take, take that into account. Yeah. But in any case, Canary Islands is, as a whole is part of a, Ceuta and Melilla as well, are part of the same territory for Spanish plastic tax purposes. And then intra-community acquisitions. These are simply the rules of intra-community acquisitions for VAT. So same logic. Um, all these three activities for non-recycled plastic packaging. Now, here goes the question. What is plastic packaging? And then again, we could spend a uh, quite significant amount of time just on this question. And from our experience, some companies uh, dedicate to this a uh, good amount of the first few months dealing with the tax because it's not so well defined. There is a two components, uh, or a double component for this definition. The first of all is the nature of the product. The nature must be plastic. Man, and it must be non-reusable. Uh, plastic is defined by the relevant article of the regulation of the European Parliament. It's basically a polymer. But that refers to the actual kind of product, the nature of it. The second component of the definition is the purpose, which is it must work as packaging. So, in here, the law refers to any product that contains, protects, handles, distributes, or wraps goods in any stage of the manufacturing. So basically, the rule tells you, okay, it must have this nature, and it must have this defined purpose. Um, what is interesting is that the law as well, on a paragraph right below, says, is the purpose I just told you, and anything else that works on the same for the same purpose. So they are a, an open close there that pretty uh, opens the the interpretation to a lot of uh, with a lot of flexibility to a lot of possible scenarios. Um, when we look at the definition, as I said earlier, the actual uh, Definition of the scope for companies like pharmaceutical companies or, or uh, businesses that need to define what part of their product is subject to the tax, it's uh, problematic. And I'll give you a few examples. The first one is, is, is my favorite, hangers. Hangers um, are in and out of the tax, depending on what you do with it. If you go to a store and you buy a Five of hackers, I said 10 hackers. Uh, that's not subject to Spanish plastic tax. But if you, if you then go to the next store and you buy a jacket that comes with a hanger, then that hanger is subject to the plastic tax. So here it goes back to the purpose of the product, uh, which is part of the definition of the of plastic tax. The second example is this plastic cover you see here 
that is very often used in, in agricultural activities. South of Spain is famous for those. Uh, and you would expect that plastic to be subject to the tax. It's pure plastic. Yeah. But as such, it's again not meeting the purpose of packaging. It's really working as a roof. So it would not fall into that uh, uh, category. The one in the middle where you have a, a, a ballet covered by plastic certainly falls into the category. And this one right here, I'm going to minimize this, sorry. This uh, packaging clearly falls into the plastic tax, but I included it because there is an exemption that is applicable to agricultural products, to packaging of agricultural products. So in this example here, where you see in this green field, uh, this plastic tax uh, cultural uh, product would be subject to the tax, but exempt. And how about this uh, pen? Well, this pen, although it has plastic, is not packaging. So it, must, it will not fall into it. That's how interesting it can get when it comes to the definition of the, of the scope. Um, right. Plastic tax applies to non-reusable uh, plastic. That falls into, that, into the definition that we just defined. But sometimes, um, that plastic has a mix of recycled and non-recyclable uh, plastic or uh, yeah, non-recyclable product. When there is a mix of recycled and non-recyclable, you need to have a certificate from the seller, whether it's a, an exporter in China or in the US or an inter-community supply in France into Spain, or a producer in Spain, that person needs to issue a certificate stating how much of the product has recycled plastic and how much is non-recycled plastic. Because you will only calculate the tax over the non-recycled plastic. There is a temporary um, uh, measure, a temporary simplification during this year, on which it is enough with a simple statement by the supplier um, but starting 2024, that will need to follow a, a specific procedure with a specific statement that will add complexity to the tax yeah? and eventually compliance cost uh, because of that statement. So that you need to take into account. If there is a mix, you need a statement and that statement will add a uh, uh, a burden of, of compliance to the entire process. Uh, what is tax? Well, first of all, the taxable bags are kilograms of plastic. That's in the mindset of a, of a tax advisor. Taxable base in this case is a little different because you will not find it in your finance uh, reports. It's kilograms of plastic. And then what is the tax rate? The tax rate is 0 0.45 per kilogram. So you will pay based on the amount of kilos that you have. I hope that's clear. Otherwise, you can start answer, uh, sorry, asking questions through the Q&A. Um, a bit of the mechanics of the tax on the next two slides. First of all, how do you recharge the tax? Well, it's a one-off. Tax. It doesn't work like VAT, there are different stages where you pay and deduct the VAT. No, this is one off, it's one stage, one phase tax. And you have really two options. The manufacturer, the producer, will pay the tax on the first supply, or if there's a prepayment, a prepayment. And the plastic tax amount, and here comes another complexity, should be stated separately on the invoice. So on your invoice, you need to adjust your billing systems to reflect the kilograms and the tax due. And then your VAT amount of, on that invoice will be calculated based on your usual price of your products plus the plastic tax. That will create your, sorry, your taxable base. And that taxable base uh, will, will calculate the VAT amount. And so, um, so we like customs duty, you calculate it over your, your, your full amount. So in other words, plastic tax is a cost. 
And what happens after someone acquires that good from a from a manufacturer or when you import it or you bring it as an intercommunity acquisition? So those three scenarios, either you import the good, you bring it as an intercommunity acquisition, or you buy it, and then in any of those three scenarios, you sell it locally. Well, in those cases, you do not have to split the tax in the invoice unless you are requested by your customer to do so. If your client asks you to split the tax on the invoice, you have two, well, you have two options. Either indeed split it over the invoice or issue a document, a certificate, a statement saying this is how much tax uh, is calculated over this much of non-reusable, non-recycled plastic uh, on our product that falls into the category. So a statement or invoice whenever you're doing intercommunity acquisitions, imports, or you have bought locally um, this, uh, these products. And how are we doing on time? Oh my gosh. Um, this slide, I hesitated a little bit on including it at this stage or later because it really tells you compliance obligations, which I wanted to cover later. But since it helps, in my view, it helps understanding the mechanics of the tax, I included it here. So I'll dedicate some time um, to this slide. I'm going to take a little bit of water if you tap in. And and, I, and we'll go through each of these scenarios. Uh, first of all, we mentioned that manufacturing products is a scenario that creates a taxable event. What happens with a company? Typically, this is done locally, that manufactures the product that is subject to the tax. Well, first of all, the taxable event occurs when you're producing these products, when you dispose them, and when you sell them. At that point, you will need to issue an invoice splitting the plastic tax uh, amount and the kilograms. You will also need to get a plastic tax number. That's before you issue the invoice, typically. How do you make the payment of that tax that you've collected? Uh, through the plastic tax return. Do you have to file plastic tax returns? Yes. Do you need to keep separate ledgers for plastic tax? Yes. And what if your deductions? Um, are greater than your payable amounts on your tax return. You are entitled to a refund through that return. Yeah, so those are the typical obligations and mechanics of the plastic tax for a manufacturer, for a producer. Let's say you're now an importer, perhaps a foreign business that is not established in, in Spain, and you're importing plastic, uh, uh, plastic products that are subject to the tax. When do you need to pay the tax when you, when you import the product? when the product uh, goes through customs in Spain. Do you need to issue an invoice after you sell it locally? No, but as we just said, if your customer asks you for it, you need to split the amount and the invoice or uh, issue a statement. Do you need a plastic tax number? This is important. For importers, no. You don't need a plastic tax number. How do you make the payment? Importers, through the SAD document, through the famous DUA in Spain. You report the amount on the DUA, you pay the amount on the base of that report. You need to file plastic tax returns? No. You need to keep separate books? No. If you're in a scenario where you are entitled for a refund, do you get it for a return? No, because you cannot file it. You get it through the A22. We will explain this in a second. Yeah, that's the system for importers. And what if you're doing intra-community acquisitions? Okay. Third option. Again, very typical in, in, in for foreign uh, non-established but past municipal businesses in Spain who have a taxable activity. Um, the taxable event occurs following the VAT rules, so when the goods uh, reach the uh, Spanish territory, normally. Uh, do you need a plastic tax number for that activity? Yes. How do you make the payment? Through the return. So at the moment of making the return, you get your NRC, you make the payment. Um, do you need to file plastic tax returns? Yes. Do you need to keep separate books? These are ledgers. These are like safties of plastic tax. Yes. If you are in a refund position, you get it through the return. And then, 
There's one full option, which I added this morning because it gives you the full picture really, to this slide. Um, you're, not in, you're not in any of the three scenarios that normally fall into the category of the tax event. But if you're a business, and that could be a foreign business, but uh, registered in Spain, and you buy products from a, from a manufacturer, uh, or from an importer or after an intercommunity acquisition, there are some, um, there is some relevance over the Spanish plastic tax. You don't have to issue later an invoice, splitting the amount. You don't have to get a plastic number, plastic tax number. You will pay the tax as a cost, so it will be embedded on the price of your product. Uh, you don't have to file tax returns and you don't have to keep separate books. But if you, after buying locally, a product that has been subject to the tax, move it abroad, you are entitled to a refund over the, of, of that plastic tax amount. That's why you're interested in getting the amount of plastic uh, and the taxable base uh, over which the plastic tax has been calculated. Okay? That's why the local purchase of any trader can become relevant as well on the mechanics of the tax. Uh, we can go back to this slide on the questions, um, but again, it's, it's, it's I think, hopefully uh, explains the mechanics of, of the tax. Okay. Now we're going to go through exceptions and deductions. Um, okay, you define that you're subject to the tax, but there might be instances where you don't have to account for that tax because it's exempt, okay? or you don't have to, to, to pay that tax. Uh, we've noticed that there are quite a few subscribers um, to this uh, webinar who are in the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, and indeed, medicines, sanitary products, food stuff for breastfeeding um, or other medical purposes are exempt from plastic tax. And we have multiple uh, clients for whom we are focusing a lot of our work on defining whether they fall into the category of those sanitary products or not, because not everything that is done by a pharmaceutical company would fall in that medicines category. Um, another exemption is where you do an intercommunity acquisition, but the goods are shipped abroad before the due date of filing the plastic tax return. When I read this a few months ago, it puzzled me a little bit because it says that you need to submit the plastic tax return. So they will be exempt or not, depending on whether the goods are moved away of Spain before the deadline. So you pretty much need to look at the last day uh, uh, of filing the return when, when preparing the content of that return. Um, another one that generates an exemption is based on kilograms. Um, if it if the entire amount for a given reporting period is below 55 kilograms, then you are exempt. This is quite relevant for e-commerce sector, for example. And then whenever there is a manufacturer, an importer, an intercommunity acquisition of products that would normally fall into the into the, the tax, but are ultimately not used for packaging purposes, then it will also be an exemption. Then uh, I added here two slides, which I would like to go through comparing one from the other. One is the deductions or refunds that are done through the plastic tax return, and the other one is the refunds that are done outside of the plastic tax return. And as you will recall, this connects to our summary of the mechanics just, that I just mentioned. A plastic tax return is only filed by those who have a plastic tax number. And only a plastic tax number is only required by those who do intercommunity acquisitions or manufacturing of plastic tax products. So that's the first remark. You would normally be entitled to a deduction on the plastic tax return where you do intercommunity acquisitions that are immediately, well, sorry, that are shipped abroad after the deadline has passed. If they are before the deadline has passed, you fall into the exemption that I just mentioned right here. Um, so that's a deduction rather than an exemption when it's done afterwards. That means you will put it as deductible in your tax return on the following period. If they are destroyed uh, or no longer usable, that also triggers a deduction on your plastic tax return. And if you are a manufacturer and you have sold the goods, but they have been sent back to you uh, for whatever reason, uh, you issue a credit note, 
and you can deduct the plastic tax over the plastic tax return. Yeah. The condition is logically that you have returned the plastic tax also to your customer. Now, what happens uh, with refunds outside plastic tax returns? For the VAT uh, specialist, and I'm sure there are a few in this call, you can compare this between getting a bad uh, a refund or deduction through the bad return and getting it through the so-called a directive EU bad refund mechanism or 13 directive. It's when you, you get it back through this mechanism where you don't have a plastic tax number. Yeah? And that happens to those doing imports and local purchases because they don't need a plastic tax number. And when you do imports is when they are shipped abroad after the import, when they are no longer used, uh, or when they are destroyed. And in local purchases, again, when they are shipped abroad, or, again, relevant for the pharmaceutical sector, when you have purchased those products, but they are ultimately meant to be used for, for within the medical sector. And also because when they become non-reusable. Okay, I've gone a little quick, again, so I wanted to leave some time for the questions. Um, uh, before I finish on the technical section, uh, when I started on VAT, the, we learned the importance of the order of the questions, uh, uh, because it's not only about answering the right question, but actually answering in the right order. I, I use that re re remark very often when I do trainings on VAT. Uh, a similar logic applies on the plastic tax. You need to answer the right questions in the right order. The first question is, is the product reusable? So does it fall into the category? Yeah. Is it recyclable? Once you fall into the category, how much of it is going to be subject to the tax? Only the non-recycled part. Is it mixed? In which case, you will need to define how much is uh, non-recycled and issue a, a, a statement. Um, is there a taxable event? Do you manufacture, import, or do you drug monetizations? Is it subject to the tax, meaning that the purpose is packaging? Is there an exemption? Are there deductions? And then ultimately, what are the administrative obligations? So what is the compliance? And compliance is what I'm going to speak about just now. Um, there are three plus one compliance obligations uh, when it comes to plastic tax. All of them could apply to foreign companies not established in Spain. The first one is getting a plastic tax number and appointing a representative. Those are, that applies to those doing intercommunity acquisitions of plastic tax products or doing a, a manufacturing of plastic tax products. Particularly for the first ones, the, the intercommunity acquisitions, they need to appoint a fiscal representative. Marosa provides that fiscal representation, and we have already got uh, plastic tax numbers. It has been a, a, um, not as easy as a planned by the tax authorities because they initiated, they, they started to initiate audits and asking to provide them a memo of the activities. So that can happen. So the, the, the time can take, uh, it can take a bit of time. Um, so representative and getting a tax number is the first one. You need to keep separate books, which, as I said earlier, could work almost like a safety of plastic tax. It's a, it's a ledger of all your movements. Uh, there, are, there is a format for the uh, book of producers of manufacturing and a form, another format for the books of, doing, of those doing intercommunity acquisitions. You need to submit tax returns for this monthly or quarterly. Um, again, this only applies as well as the books to those who have a plastic tax number, and those are only intercommunity companies doing intercommunity acquisitions and companies manufacturing. And then you know when to issue compliant invoices with three new data fields, which are the, 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 the amount, the kilograms, and the rate. Uh, that, as I explained again earlier, would apply always to manufacturers, and it may apply to those doing intercommunity acquisitions and doing imports whenever it's requested by the client, unless Instead of, of, of stating that information on the invoice, you state it on a separate document. Um, the fiscal representative remark, um, I just mentioned it, it's required by foreign businesses. Uh, it requires a dedicated registration. We see a audit over that application, so we recommend doing it sooner rather than later. 
In terms of administrative obligations, this is our two examples of the return and the ledgers that actually come from the tax authorities' website. Um, the first one is the quantity, so how much plastic, whether it's recycled or non recycled. The second one is the taxable base, only the non recycled plastic that you'll include here. Uh, the third section is um, the actual tax amount due. The fourth one is whether you're entitled to any deduction. Um, and then the fifth one is whether you are carrying forward any amount from previous tax returns. Six, seven, and eight um, are only completed once. That's why we speak about six boxes. So it's a relatively simple return. You will complete six if there is a tax on you know, which a payment is due, seven if you are a refund but you want to carry it forward, and eight if you are uh, requesting a refund. The ledger is relatively uh, straightforward when you see it, plus we've prepared a ledger in English with explanations of its section. We're happy to share that with you um, after the call, so please feel to, to send us a, a question. And then, because of the complexity of the tax, it's relevant to also keep an eye on the, what are the penalties. Depending on the activity that you uh, are missing, you will have one penalty or not. Not registering or not, or not having a fis uh, fiscal rep has a fixed penalty of 1,000 euros. We recommend registering because you just avoid it, uh, and, and it will eventually uh, uh, stay for the future. You will have to do it sooner or later. Not uh, meeting the new invoice requirements, uh, there is a penalty of 50% of the tax due or 75% if that is a repetitive uh, missed activity. If you overuse the exemptions, if you abuse the system of exemptions, then there will be a penalty of 150% of the tax benefit that you use with a minimum of 1,000 euros. So they're getting a bit stricter on this. And then for every document that you don't issue, for every invoice that you don't issue or you had to any statement, you will get a penalty of 75 euros per document missed. Uh, one last remark after the webinar. We will share with you a few resources that I find interesting. The first one is a, is a chat. It's a decision tree from the tax authorities. I, it, we will send you the link and I recommend that using your usual browser, you've got, you, you translate it into English and you will see how you could define your questions and come up with an answer. Um, it's really a decision tree rather than a chat. Uh, not like chat in GPT, uh, so not as, as uh, sophisticated, but it gives you answers. Um, the second one is we will translate for you the frequently asked questions that have been published by the tax authorities. And the third one, and this is only if you speak Spanish, and if you're lucky and you, you, you stumble into someone who speaks English in the tax authorities, but they're quite proactive and, and you can leave your number and they will call you back. And this is part of the department of questions from the tax authorities. So we will send you the link to that portal where you can leave your number too. And then uh, one last point before we jump into the questions, which I'm sure you've been asking. Uh, what are really the practical problems? So uh, by now, I've explained the logic of the tax, the mechanics of the tax, the taxable rates, the taxable events, you know all this, but where will you spend most of your time and where do businesses spend their efforts? And unfortunately, each business is different. That's why we cannot give you a straight answer. Finding the right data in your systems, because this is not financial data, this is plastic, and you will find it sometimes with uh, the system managing the environmental taxes, sometimes with the logistics uh, system, some, sometimes in the ERP. Uh, that all needs to be gathered into a, a financial uh, module of the ERP, so that will be the challenge. Uh, one word on our approach, so what we're usually doing um, with questions and, and projects over plastic tax is that we first identify the flows. Uh, so we see where are taxable events taking place, depending on where your goods come from and where do they, uh, whether they go uh, sit abroad or not afterwards. We then do a mapping, we, we evaluate your data, we do a mapping of your data, we design a template and a process to comply with your uh, monthly returns, 
and then we implement and test that process. So there is a section of technical analysis, and there is a section of uh, verifying that uh, that data and complying with the administrative obligations. We do these projects, and you might have seen the logo in the first slide, with Belen Palau Abogados. Belen Palau is a firm, a law firm, um, dedicated and specialized in um, excise duties in Spain and customs duties. So do uh, keep that contact from Belen Palau. They are, they are doing a great job when it comes to excise duties, and we strongly recommend them for any question. We work for, with them for technical uh, and complex questions on patent advisory, whereas we focus more on the technology and on the compliance. We'll share the details after this call as well. Um, right, I've rushed a little bit because it was a lot of content. I hope it was useful. Um, and now it's time for questions. Uh, I'm going to stop uh, sharing my screen. One, you could give it a try and, and, and try uh, share your screen yourself. Let's do a bit of Testing because this is a bit of a. Uh, right. Can you can you hear me better? Okay. I see you. Can, can you try the audio? Hello, hello. I hear you a bit far away. I don't know if it's only me. You hear it well? Okay, so it's only me, which is a good thing. Um, All right. Perfect. So I'll leave it with you, Juan. I'm going to yeah. turn my microphone on. Uh, yeah, we have, we have received plenty, plenty of questions, so I'll try to um, attach all, all of them. Um, do you have to declare this tax for Canary Islands and Spain mainland separately? Uh, in principle, it's not needed. They will, it will be the same tax return for, for both um, regions because it, the, both form part of the same territory for this tax, for the proposal of this tax. So it's going to be the same tax return in principle. There are certain requirements for um, the activity of, of manufacture, uh, but I think this is, this is not the most. Is the buyer consumer that will pay that tax as extra line on the invoice? Um, not not really. The, the one paying the one paying the um, the tax is going to be the the one importing goods, which are with, within the scope of the tax. The one um, uh, making intra-community acquisitions. Or the one uh, manufacturing. Then it's on your on your decision if you want to charge that extra cost uh, through the price through the sales price to the to the final consumer. Was the plastic wrapping of the pallet to secure the goods in the scope of the plastic tax? Yes, normally normally it is because this is um, a product uh, made of uh, plastic that is intended to uh, protect, to contain, to transport, or to facilitate the transport of of those goods, so the wrapping of those pallets and any any other type of uh, product that it's uh, coming with those pallets of goods made of plastic normally will be within the scope of this uh, of this tax. So one 100% recycled plastic packaging does not need certification only if that is mixed. Well, the certificate we need a cert you, you will need as a taxpayer you will need a certificate to prove uh, the amount of um, recycled plastic tax because it's the part of uh, plastic which will not be taxed um, in this scenario. So the certificate is only to prove the uh, part of this re recycled plastic. Can you charge VET on a tax? How strange? Well, this is this is rule on, on, on the VET law in, in Spain uh, that excise duties, excise taxes um, should be included in the taxable base for, for VET. Will the official certificate uh, be effective on 1st of January 2024 applied only to non-recycled plastic? It's the other way around. The certificate is to prove the um, recycled tax because this is not tax. Um, um, the part of non-recycled tax is the one that you will need to pay, applying a rate of uh, 45 cents of euro per kilo of non-recycled plastic tax. So the one that you are leaving out out of the of the tax is the one that you need to prove uh, through the certificate. If a foreign a foreign EU legal entity transfer goods from an EU country into into a Spanish warehouse and then sell these goods in Spain using its uh, bad number, who would 
uh, they be liable for the plastic tax, uh, the foreign legal entity, or the Spanish customer. Well, if you are uh, moving goods, moving a stock uh, from a new country into Spain, you are making intercommunity acquisition of goods, which is a, um, a chargeable event for, for the scope of this tax. And if you are bringing um, plastic packaging goods uh, through this intercommunity acquisition, you will need to pay, you as, as the acquirer, will need to pay this plastic tax. Um, for an intra EU acquisition, we report already transactions in the SII. Does it mean that for all transactions reported in our SII from January 2023, we need to ask the vendor for the quantity? Yes. Um, if you are if you are affected by this um, by this tax because you are either uh, well you, you are making intermediate acquisition of goods, you will need um, to start already keeping records of all those acquisitions um, and a specific data uh, applying to this tax weights, type of plastics, uh, suppliers, and and so on. It's kind of the SII but but with with different with different data. What is a tax, a tax plastic number? The one from the representative, if we are not establishing Spain, in this case, who can act as a representative? Well, the tax plastic number is, is, is the ID number for, for the proposal of the plastic tax. It's kind of the same, same as the VAT number, but for, for uh, the plastic tax. Um, who can act as the representative? Um, well, Mar Marosa can do, for, for sure. But it can be any any established um, entity in 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 Spain. Um, same about the wrapping of plastic coming uh, with the pallets. If a company buys products intra community subject to the plastic tax and sells those goods B to C, do they have to pay twice the tax? No, you will need, you, you you will pay the tax only when uh, performing intercommunity acquisition. Then, during the sale process, it's up to you if you want to uh, increase the sales price to, to um, cover this extra cost. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Is it required to keep books for the intercommunity acquisition of goods fa falling under the exemption? It is required, yes. Uh, the, the, the answer is yes. You need you need to keep track of all intercommunity acquisitions, and in case um, those are falling any of the exemptions provided by the law, you will need to assign a, a specific code uh, in in the book. So the answer is yes. Can you just pay the tax and not recharge it to the customer? Yes, that is that is up to you. If you want to um, up, um, increase the sales price to to your end customer, or if you want to um, um, Take it, take it on yours. So it's up to you. Can the book be a simple Excel month? Um, well, our solution is based on a simple Excel. So we, we are simplifying that um, uh, in that way. And from that simple Excel, we uh, convert it into the required format um, to be submitted to the Spanish tax authorities. Um, and the period. Um, that will depend on the frequency of your BET filings in Spain. If you are uh, filing monthly, you will need to uh, submit the books monthly. If you are on a quarterly uh, scheme, you can do that uh, on a quarterly basis. If a company is the importer of records into Spain, needs to pay the plastic tax to the customs and um, authorities, that's uh, correct. Uh, if you are importing goods within the scope of the plastic tax, um, during the import clearance, um, you will self-assess the plastic tax and you will pay all the customs uh, liability to the customs authorities through um, the import documents. Does the packaging have to be actually recycled or just recyclable? Uh, that's a good question. It needs to be um, recycled. F first, first of all, the, the scope of the tax is any type of uh, packaging. The definition in the law is, is quite broad, so any type of uh, packaging, remember what Pedro was saying at the, at the beginning of the webinar, just a hanger which comes with, um, uh, with, a, with a jacket is within the scope of the tax. So any type of packaging made of plastic, of any type of plastic, and non-reusable, those, those are the, the key points to identify um, the products. And then um, the part of non-recycled tax is the, is the one that um, for which you will need to self-assess the, the tax, 
and the part of free cycle tax is going to be out out of the out of the calculations. Um, let me load some additional ones. Where goods wrapped in non-reusable plastic tags are moved to Spain for the purpose of rental services in Spain, rental of goods, that does this qualify as an intercommunity acquisition? In principle, yeah, in principle, it's gonna qualify, it's gonna qualify because you, you are, uh, if you are supplying the goods along with this wrapping, that 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 falls within the definition of um, plastic packaging. So in principle, it's gonna be within the within the scope, yes. Mm -mm -mm. Do IBC containers, interme intermediate bulk containers used for transport of liquid of goods fall within the scope of the tax? It depends. Those containers are re reusable or, or not. It's going to be for a one single single use. If those are non reusable, most probably they will fall under under the scope of uh, this tax. Um, exemptions, intracommunity intra -community acquisition of uh, products shipped abroad. What means abroad could be intracommunity supplies and third-party country supplies. Indeed, so for exemptions or um, deductions, um, what is um, explained on, on the law is that if you are taking those goods that are within the scope of the of the tax, and and you send it out out of Spain, including Canary Islands, Ceuta, Melilla. Um, those will be exempted, or you will qualify for a for a deduction or or for a refund. So it means it means abroad. In this case, means outside Spain, including Canary Islands, Ceuta, Melilla. Um, what is the deadline for asking for a plastic tax number? Uh, you you need to have one before you perform your your first taxable um, transaction for the for the scope of this tax. So before uh, doing any import, before doing any intercommit acquisition, or in case you are manufacturing, before uh, making the the, the first uh, supply. Uh... If the non-established entity has direct supply business, mm -mm, products purchased to a EU vendor, goods are shipped to a final customer. Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. So basically, the question here is the requirements. I understand uh, the requirements regarding the the invoice, the, the invoice requirements. Basically, so if you are if you are making intercommunity acquisition of goods and you are um, assessing plastic tax and paying plastic tax, and then you are performing um, local sales to to your to your to your customers within Spain, they can um, request to a quote on the on the invoice or either in a certificate. Um, the amount of plastic tax that you have paid on that intercommunity acquisition, uh, the amount of kilos of plastic, and if there is any exemption that is applying uh, for, for your specific case. Okay, last questions. Um, if our suppliers are doing directly local delivery to our customers, is our company established required for any billing, accountability returns, keeping the certificates evidence? Um, uh, the, the answer would be yes, only if you are a taxpayer for, for, for this tax. I mean, um, if, if, if it's just your company, your established company making intercommunity acquisitions, imports, or well, this is not the case of manufacturing, um, you, will need, you will need to comply with all formal obligations. You will need to get a plastic tax code. You will need to keep the books and submit the returns. 
Um, I got another question regarding the fiscal representative. There is no uh, direct registration possible as there is for BAT. Uh, all you companies also need a fiscal uh, representative. Yes, the answer is yes. So uh, if you're a non-established entity in Spain, you will need to appoint a representative for the proposal of the plastic tax. It's not the same, it's not the same as the VAT, that if you're a, a new company, you can um, uh, go through a direct VAT registration. Um, you will need to appoint a representative uh, for the proposal of this tax. All right, I don't know, I don't know Pedro, how are we doing about uh, timing? Well, I, we still have uh, quite a few people uh, registered and 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 uh, listening to the to the to your questions and answers. Over a hundred people, uh, but uh, I agree that uh, perhaps the most uh, practical way of approaching this is to let we're gonna let the the um, webinar open for anyone who wants to add any question, and we'll take all those questions, we'll put them in writing. And we add our answers to the to to those questions, and then we share them as a Q and A as a Q and A session. Yeah. So let's give maybe five more minutes to make it uh, twelve for yeah. everyone to to add their questions, um, and then we we basically close the close the the session. Uh, I don't know, Juan, if you want to add anything else to the existing questions that you added. I'm just looking for for new for new questions that maybe I overlooked. I'm just scrolling down the list. I think that was great, uh, great answers, Juan. Uh, really practical, practical input there. Uh, um, and I think I covered pretty much all of them. Okay. All right, then perhaps um, let's close it there. Um, as I said, for the next five minutes, uh, you can ask your questions. Uh, at 12, uh, we will close the call. The recording will end. We will leave the meeting. And at that point, we will collect anything that is outstanding and we will give you an answer uh, via email. We will follow up with, with an email. We aim to make these webinars as informative as possible. And um, uh, so, you know, answer our emails with more questions if you have to. We will you know, try to provide as much as possible grounds for you to navigate this new tax. Thank you, everyone, for attending. It was a great venue. Thank you, Juan and Miguel, who's on the background, so much for your input. Uh, very much appreciated your help. And have a lovely day, everyone else. Thanks so much.